two years prior to Revelation, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam began to love solitude. He was tired of society. He used to go off to Ghari Hira and he would stay there because he was done with the society. He was done with it. And he wanted to worship Allah, but he didn't know how. He would take provisions and he would go and stay in the cave for nights on end. A dark cave, three miles away from Mecca. And he would sit in this cave focusing on Allah, just wanting to know how to worship Allah. In the darkness of Ghari Hira came the light of Iqra. Jibreel hugs three times. I can't read, I can't read, I can't read. He runs back to Khadijah in the dark, three miles, shaking, having just experienced something unimaginable. An angel hugging him. He runs back to Khadijah. She holds him and he says, listen closely, because I want to ask you, what is a sign that Allah loves you? What is a sign that you're on Hidayah? He says, I'm worried. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes, I'm worried, I'm worried. She goes, Kalla, Allah will never ever forsake you. But look at this, does she say, because you spend months in i'tikaf? Does she say, because you spend hours in meditation and dhikr? Does she say, because you spend days in dua, that's why Allah won't forsake you? The reason why Allah won't forsake you is because you do so much ibadah? La Sayyidina Khadija, she says, you keep the family tight. One day the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was on the member. I want you to picture it. You can see him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was on the member and he saw Hassan and Hussein stumbling into the masjid. They were toddlers. They had a long jilbab on. So they were tripping. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he rushed down the member and he picked up his two grandsons. And he looked at all the men in the masjid and he said, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. One day Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was leading salah. Allahu Akbar. And he goes down in sajda. Imagine you're behind him. He's in sajda. He keeps going. Everybody's like, what's going on? Sajda's getting long. After a few minutes, Prophet Sallallahu comes up, finishes the salah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ya Rasulullah, what happened in sajda? In the last rakab, first sajda, you were in sajda for so long. Was a new verse revealed? <laughs> what happened? Something big. He said, la, my grandson was on my back. My grandson was on my back. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, when you were away from him, he was striking. He had ru'u. But when you got close to him, you fell in love with him. Do people who are close to you love you? Fatima al-Zahra, radiallahu an. First year of revelation, Fatima al-Zahra was born, radiallahu an. And the Rasul loved her so much. They say, subhanallah, when she would walk into the room, he would stand up to her. Oh, Fatima. And then he would bring her close and he would kiss her forehead. And then he would hug her. She says the day he died, she walked into the room and he didn't stand up. She said, I knew right there my daddy's gonna die because every time I walk in the room, he would stand up to me. And he called her close because he couldn't get up. And she bent down in front of him and he whispered in her ear and she started to cry. And then he said, come back, come back. And he whispered in her ear again and she started to laugh. Later on, they asked her, what did he say to you? She said, the first time he told me he was going to pass away tonight. So I cried. But then when he called me back, he said, but you'll be the first one from my family to come meet me. So she laughed. She laughed at death. Six months later, Fatima al-Zahra passes away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once picked up his grandchildren and he kissed them. Aqra bin Habis radiallahu an was standing there. He goes, I got 10 sons. I've never kissed any of them. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is it my fault if God has snatched mercy from your heart? Meaning mercy is that relationship, that love that you have with your wife, with your children. When's the last time you told your dad, I love you? When's the last time you told your mama, I love you? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, when you love someone, tell them you love them. Zayd ibn Iharaba, he was kidnapped as a young boy, sold to Khadija. Khadija radiallahu an gifts him as a gift to Rasul sallallahu at the time of marriage. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, I don't need servants, you're free, you're free. Hang around here with me, I'll look after you, but you're not a slave. Word spreads around the Arabian Peninsula that Zayd is in Mecca. Zayd's father and uncle travel all the way to Mecca. 
Can you tell us where Muhammad is? Can you tell us where Muhammad is? Can you tell us where Muhammad is? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They finally find Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they say, you are the best of Banu Hashem. You are the best of Quraysh. He says, just tell me what you need. They say, you have our son. He says, who? They say, Zayd ibn Haritha. He said, oh, if he wants to go with you, he can, but I won't force him. He calls Zayd into the room. Zayd, do you know these men? Yeah, I know them. Who are they? That's my dad. That's my uncle. Okay, well, they want you to go home with them. In that moment, Zayd ibn Haritha looks at his dad, blood father, his uncle, blood uncle. And then he looks at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, I can't give nobody preference over you, Muhammad. I have to stay here with you. They say, Zayd, would you rather be a slave than a free man? He says, I'd rather be a slave to this man than free in this world. From that moment, Rasul sallallahu he said, from today, your name is Zayd ibn Muhammad. The closer you got to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the more love he showered on you. Why is it that the people closest to us feel like we love them the least? If you smile more outside the house than you do inside the house, what's wrong? Let the people closest to you be the ones to receive the most of your goodness.